Assalamu alaikum. This is Abdul Rahman, a student of King Faisal University. We are in part two of a series of lessons on one form using C sharp. In this lesson, we will discuss the creating form using code. Forms allow us to create a traditional Windows applications. Every form inherits the class form from package system.windows.forms. When creating applications in Visual Studio, there are things that will be done automatically by the system that may not be important for us to know. These things include generated files, settings, and codes. For our first activity, we will create a .NET console app that displays an object of form class with text property of my first form. You read it right. We will create a console app first for us to understand how a form is created by code. So let's create a new console app project. Select C sharp console app and name it WF2 underscore one. Let's add a new class and call it my first form. Since this class will extend the form class, we will add a reference to the package system.windows.forms. To do that, right click the references in the solution explorer and click add reference. Scroll down and check system.windows.forms. Click OK button. Let the class extend form. Click a quick action or the yellow ball to use the package for form. Click again the quick action to generate a constructor. Type this, then dot inside the constructor and notice the properties, method, and events that my first form inherited from form class. The range symbolizes properties, the box for methods, and the lighting for events. Since in the problem we will set the text property to my first form, click or type text and set its value to my first form. Let's go back to program.cs and inside the main method, let's create an object of my first form. We can run it using the methods show or show dialog. But since this is our first form for the application, we will use the application class also from system.windows.forms package. Now run it. Congratulations, you just created your first form using code. Remember that the two lines can also be written without using a name for the object. In the solution explorer, double click my first form.cs. Did you see what it did? It's created a new tab with the design of our form. Isn't that cool? Right click my first form.cs in the explorer and we can see that there are now two views available the view code and the view designer. The code is popularly known as code behind which separates it from the design. Before we leave this activity, open the code and add the word partial before the reserved word class. There was no error, right? This is important for our next activity. Before we run it for a second time, right-click our project and select properties. Change output type to Windows application. Run it. Notice that the console window is no longer shown. Well done. For our second activity, we will create this time a Windows form app that displays a form with text value of my second form and background should be maroon. Let's create a new form app project 
and name it WF2 underscore 2. Notice that the form has already been generated for us. Let's look at the code that were auto-generated for us. Right-click form1.cs and notice the same view options for designer and code. Select view code. Is it familiar? It's almost the same to what we did in the first activity, right? Can you think of where we can change the text property? If you said inside the constructor, then you are right. But we will not do that this time. But remember that it's one way of setting values to its properties. Notice the word partial. It is a way to split the definition of a class into several files. But once compiled, all these parts are combined. To understand it further, expand form1.cs. Notice the second.cs file called form1.designer.cs. Double click it. Notice that there are now three tabs visible. Two are for codes and the third is for designer. Notice also that both code files are called class form1 and both have the partial keyword. This is because they are two parts of the same class form1. And when we compile the application, both files are combined to represent the form1 class. However, most of the codes in the designer.cs are auto-generated, so we will rarely use it, if not at all. Last on our code, double-click program.cs and see a familiar line from our first activity. Application.run, a new form1. Now view the designer and in the properties window, notice the properties of our form1. Change the text property to my second form. Change the back color property to maroon by clicking the web tab. Run it. Great job. I hope you now understand how our form is generated by Visual Studio. For your challenge, modify our last project by changing the form's text property to I used code to change this and back color of clue using code. In our next lesson, we will discuss controls, events, and event handlers. Thank you for joining me in this channel.